consists of basically up top you got kidneys. We talk a lot about kidneys, mostly about kidneys. Right? Well, in the end, what they do is they produce your I filtering blood plasma. So there's a renal pelvis slash ureter that takes, um, transfers the urine down to the bladder. <clears throat> so the, I'll say the um, renal pelvis slash ureter. Because they're basically the same thing. The renal pelvis is the wide part of the tube that narrows into the ureter. Um, and this is, they just tra transport the urine. They have no part in urine production or modifying the urine. <clears throat> just transport. So I'm writing, they transport urine to urinary bladder. Some people say bladder, and it's understood to be the urinary bladder. I don't want you to confuse it with the gallbladder. So put urinary bladder. Or... Know that there's a couple of bladders in this unit. So you get down to the bladder itself, the urinary bladder. It's just a muscular tube, or it's not, not a tube, muscular sac that contains the urine. You just store the urine there. Urinary bladder. Muscular sac. Or urine storage. You start to feel it at about 500 ml and you get to a liter, a liter and a half, you start to max out. Uh, you start to really feel a full bladder. And then so, um, when you void your bladder, the tube that takes it to the outside world is the urethra. Now this is a male, so you can see the prostate right underneath the bladder. So prostatic urethra, the membranous urethra, then penile urethra. It was the same urethra we studied in repro for males and for females. Urethra. I'm just going to say a tube that excretes urine to the outside world. So excretion is, uh, you know, one of the basic functions of this system because the kidneys are producing a urine. This is what you want to be excreted out of the blood. To go through the PowerPoint slide, if we take a look at this first slide here, it shows you the urinary system and um, some basic functions. So the first thing I have there conserves essential nutrients delivered to the kidney. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, you don't want to lose all of the valuable things you're filtering in the plasma. 
um, like salt and glucose and water. You want to reabsorb most of that. Okay, so um, in the kidney, kidneys reabsorb valuable nutrients. water, sodium, bicarbonate, just to name a few. Now you know what that means, right? You put it back into the blood so you don't lose it to the urine. In essence, you conserve them. So they are not lost to the urine. We talk about the process of reabsorption a lot. Uh, today, yeah. So, it kind of leads to the second point. You're able to regulate water and electrolytes. Regulate H2O. And the electrolyte we talk about mostly is sodium ions. Okay. And, um, you know, we talk a lot about, <clears throat> we talked about it a lot already. Think back to the first test, and we talked about ADH and aldosterone. Both of those targeted the kidney, so you're going to want to review those. Both target the kidney, ADH, aldosterone. I even think it's like the first question on the test. What's the function of that? Sodium reabsorption. And yeah, we'll talk about that more. Critical role in acid base balance. Let's see. Now, you want to keep blood pH at something like 7.4 around there. There's a normal range, but you know something like that. <clears throat> That's the average. And the kidney can excrete or reabsorb um, kidneys can excrete means get rid of it slash reabsorb conserve it hydrogen ions or bicarbonate. Hydrogen ions are obviously the acid and the bicarb is the base. So if you can kind of balance that by excreting or reabsorbing, you can kind of keep the pH balanced if it gets too acidic or basic. So we'll talk about that. The endocrine function <clears throat> that is renin and EPO. Kidney secrete. Renin, urethropoiet. And uh, we talked about those. And they're, they're coming up again. EPO increases your crit. Talked about that. Renin, the whole RAS mechanism. It was on two tests already. It'll be on a third test. Um, yeah. So I already mentioned excretion. <clears throat> it's pretty amazing. This is the only organ that performs true excretion. Some people think defecation is excretion. I would disagree with that. Whatever you defecate passed through your digestive tract and was never absorbed. It just passed through you. Okay. Excretion is you filter your blood. You filter it out of your blood. That's excretion. <clears throat> Something is in your bloodstream the kidneys can filter it out, and you can urinate it out. That's excretion. <clears throat> Here's a picture of a model we have in the room, and it shows the four basic parts. So, kidneys, urine-producing structures. We'll look at the inside of it today. And then I said you got the renal pelvis ureter. There and there, the yellow tube goes down to the muscular bladder. You can't see the, uh, the urethra that view. If you remove the kidney, 
from the body cavity. <laughs> and this is kind of like what you'll be presented with tomorrow when tomorrow is your last mandatory lab. And uh, you know, we got fresh sheep kidneys, not preserved, fresh. Let's see. So, you know, to find the, the kidney in the body cavity, I'm not really showing you that, but. The whole system is basically retroperitoneal, okay? I, I use as a landmark to locate it when I try to find out my cadavers, rib 12. I just kind of palpate rib 12 where it's one of the floating ribs. Okay, there's rib 12 and I kind of reach back. And there's, um, it's, it's anchored by the renal fascia. The renal fascia is a, is a fatty connective tissue. It really holds the kidneys in place on your back body wall so not jiggling around. <clears throat> by a renal fascia. I use, personally, I use 12 for rib to locate it. <clears throat> They're not easy to find. You just can't look back there and see, there it is. You have to like kind of dig through it. The renal fascia, I'll be honest, I just use my fingers and I just tear, <laughs> keep tearing stuff around rib 12 toy. Oh, there it is. And I always find it after I tear through a few layers of tissue on the back body wall. <clears throat> and um, let's see here. So, the renal fascia is not the renal capsule. The renal fascia is holding it in place. Um, when they do kidney transplants, obviously you, the, the recipient of the donated kidney, you can't rebuild the renal fascia. So they just kind of put it in the iliac fossa, so it kind of sits there. So renal fascia is really good for us to hold our kidneys in place. But the fibrous capsule that surrounds it is not part of the fascia that holds it in. So I'll just put that as a capsule that's around it. There's also the adrenal gland or the suprarenal gland, but we already learned that. So we're not concerned with that in this chapter. The only other thing to look at besides the organ itself is it's kidney shaped. Uh, there's this helium here. On your sheep kidney, you should be able to identify the renal artery and vein you know, and the renal pelvis slash ureter. In renal A and B, and be able to identify renal pelvis slash ureter. So that has an organ, not much to look at. It's pretty simple. You pretty much have to cut it open to see stuff. Um, before, I, before we do that, let's look at the microscopic structure that performs all the basic functions of the kidney. The functional unit of the kidney is the nephron. You have about a million per kidney. describing the nephron as the functional unit of the kidney. Because if you understand the nephron, how it works, you basically understand how the whole kidney works. Okay? And so I'll just kind of define the, the words that 
are keyed out there, it says filtration. That's a basic function of the kidney. What's it filtering? The blood plasma. Filtration of the blood plasma. And if you look at the figure, you have a specialized capillary that, that does the filtration. All capillaries filter. They all do. We, know, we talked about that. The hydrostatic pressure pushes fluids out. However, this one is a special filter because, look at the F here, this specialized capillary has a capsule around it. The capsule is connected to this long tube, the nephron. Okay, so you've never seen that before. You've never seen a capillary that had a capsule completely enveloping it. All right? So blood's coming in, this is the afferent arterial. You filter it through blood here. What, whatever is filtered, you're only filtering the plasma. The crit can't get through. The RBCs are too big. Formed elements don't get through. Pretty much just filtering out the blood plasma here to this proximal tubule. So filtration happens at the glomerulus. It's a specialized capillary. The word the glomer means like ball of yarn. So it's named for the appearance, the shape of the capillaries, ball of yarn. So whatever's filtered is going to go through this nephron loop, okay, this nephron tubule. And so along the way, the rest of the nephron performs reabsorption, secretion. And the arrow will show you the, the, the direction of transfer. One thing I should mention is when you filter the plasma, what you filter, what makes it into the tube is called the filtrate. Okay. Filtrate is filtered plasma. And that is what is coursing through the rest of the nephron. Reabsorption is if you take a molecule, water, salt, whatever it is, you take it out of the filtrate, you put it into the blood. That's the definition. Filtrate to blood. And if it stays in the bloodstream, it'll eventually make it out through the renal vein. You stay in the bloodstream. Okay, secretion is the opposite direction. Secretion is, well, opposite. So something's in the bloodstream and it's moved into the filtrate. So from blood to filtrate. And the thing is, if it's secreted, and never reabsorbed along the way, it's excreted. If something is secreted and not reabsorbed, It's excreted. <clears throat> and that's the last thing, excretion. You just make it out of the tube, you're going to make it into the renal pelvis ureter down in the bladder where you await uh, to be excreted. Lost to the urine. That's where I'm writing. <coughs> so you see that these the, the nephron has has these different parts. The first part is the capsule that forms around the specialized capillary bed. Uh, it's called Bowman's capsule or renal capsule. B. 
basic parts Now, the nephron is simply an epithelial tube, but it interacts with three different capillary beds. I said interacts. I think exchange is a better word. Beds in a second. Let's go through the basic epithelial parts of this epithelial tube. Let's start with the capsule that wraps around the glomerulus. That's called the Bowman's capsule. It's, it's catching all the filtrate, right? None of it escapes. It's completely wrapped around the glomerulus. Catching, I don't know if that's an accurate term, but catches all the filter. And that capsule is connected to the rest of the tube. Now the first part, the most proximal part to the capsule is they just call it proximal tubule. Now it's, it's a really twisty, turny curve, and so usually it's called the proximal convoluted tubule. It's the first part after the capsule. So that, as you can see, it's one continuous tube from beginning to end, proximal, convoluted, tubule, PCT for short, and yeah, that's just the name of it. Now, as you can see, it's continuous with this loop, this hairpin loop, it's a U-turn, uh, it's called the loop of Henley, or sometimes they call it the nephron loop. Nephron loop, or I actually prefer a loop of Henry. And then that's continuous with, not proximal, but the distal tubule, which leads into this collecting dug. So that's kind of the end of the nephron. The distal tubule leads to a, like a, a connecting tubule that connects to this vertical thing called the, this thing, not labeled, what's labeled there, collecting duct. So from distal tubule to collecting tubule, and that leads directly to collecting duct. Now the collecting duct may receive filtrate from several collecting tubules. It's not a one-to-one -one relationship as the picture implies. receives receives filtrate from several collecting tubules. Well, I should also say that the distal tubule is actually fully named proximal convoluted tubule, also named distal convoluted tubule, just to match. I'll just put that here just to match. Distal convoluted tubule, also abbreviated DCT, and I use those terms frequently, PCT, DCT with a loop in between. So those are the basic parts of the epithelial tube. Now the three capillary beds shown here, we already talked about one which has the filtration function. That's the uh, glomerulus.
Now, you've never seen this before. You've got a glomerulus. Look at the glomerulus. You have two arterioles. <clears throat> One is delivering blood to the glomerulus. That would be the apron arterial. Blood coming in, filter stuff out. Whatever doesn't get filtered goes out the efferent arterial. Okay. And you associate those with the glomerulus. The capillary beds, one is the glomerulus with an afferent and efferent arterioles. So that's weird. You have a, well, why is it weird? What do we usually see? Arterial, capillary, what comes after the capillary? Uh, yeah, venule or small vein, and we're not seeing that here. It goes capillary, I'm oh, sorry, it goes arterial, capillary, arterial. Not only that, <clears throat> do you see how both arterials are on the same side? I'm not used to seeing that either. Usually, there's another blood vessel over here, but it's not. You've got the capsule around it, and you know, it's got this tubule structure, so that's unusual. Well, anyways, there's other capillary beds. This ether and arterial will give rise um, to other capillaries, maybe called paratubular capillaries, which will exchange with other parts of the tubule, right? Paratubular. capillary associated with the loop of Henle called the, uh, the vasa recta, this one here. So I'm writing vasa recta exchange with the loop of Henle. So you got three capillary beds there performing all those other functions. So, well, what we're gonna unpack uh, this a little bit more, but what I wanted to do is, I wanted to show you how the nephron fits in the kidney. Um, when you do the kidney dissection, you're making one cut. Just cut the thing right in half in this plane so you can see uh, all the major regions of the, of the um, kidney. I mean, first off, this region out here is all cortex. Yeah. Let's see if the app can show that to you better. So, let me see here. yeah. So, see how it highlights like just the outer green edge or this up here? That would be renal cortex. So whenever you see the term renal or nephron, those are Latin and Greek roots that, that mean kidney. Okay. So you know, just to just kind of draw all this. So this whole outer region, you got the renal cortex. Uh, then you have these, the medulla, the inner part, is arranged into these pyramids. Highlighted in green. Okay, all these little lobes. The lobes of the kidney are these renal pyramids. I'll draw a few. So 
so renal cortex, you know, pyramids, also called um, medullary pyramids because it's the renal medulla. Renal medulla or medullary pyramids. All, all mean the same thing. What I just drew, what's in, what's in green there. Then you need, you need a collection system. <clears throat> You need to collect the urine. When you get to that tip of the pyramid, the tip of the pyramid is called um, the renal papilla. Uh, right there, just the tip. And at the tip, you have this collection system, these cups or calyces that collect the urine. So as part of renal pyramid, put as a substructure, um, renal papilla. Then you have calyces. collect the urine. I like those. Those are the minor calyces. And you have major calyces. The minor ones are like connected to a pyramid. <coughs> minor slash major. Calyces are cups that collect the urine. So minor ones drain into major ones. There's major calyces. All my arms can draw one big one. So minor calyx to major calyx to renal pelvis. Highlighting green now, it's just basically the first part of the tube, right? But it's the wide part, wide like your pelvis, the renal pelvis, and then that's continuous with the ureter. Okay. Now what I want you to see is how the nephron fits in the cortex medulla thing. We'll go back to this PowerPoint picture. Actually, you know what, let me show you one more thing. It's hard to see, let me see if I can turn off the light, maybe I'll show a little better. There's cortex medulla, all the calyx stuff, and there's space here kind of around the calyces. That's called the renal sinus. I'm going to highlight it in green. Inferior renal sinus. Superior renal sinus. You should note that. The renal sinus. Space around the calyces system. Like um, if you want to get a pool put in your backyard, first thing you gotta do is dig a hole. Just dig a mud hole. Just get the ground out of there. So just the physical hole would be like the renal sinus. Okay. But then you, you put, I don't know, fiberglass or cement to fill the hole. Well that would be like the calyces. Okay. And then if it's got urine in it, that'll be like the water in the pool. But um, usually it's filled with fat and blood vessels. 
the sinus leaks. And you'll be able to see that in your fresh sheet kidney. <coughs> All right. And so the nephron that we just looked at, the basic parts, well, the name of the capillary bed that performs the first function is filtration. Okay. And we'll, those are in the cortex. So I'll draw a little ball here. You know, the, that, that's my glomerulus. It's in the cortex, not in the medulla. That's where you find it. Now, you put a cap around that, a little capsule. <coughs> My renal capsule, obviously also in the cortex. Okay. Now the first part of that tube is the proximal convoluted tubule, also in the cortex. There you go. So I'll just kind of call it, you know, PCT, I'll give you one label so you orient yourself. Oh, that's the PCT. So that means that thing before it is glomerulus capsule. Then you had that nephron loop. Okay. So that's um, LOH. Okay, then notice how the nephron loop kind of turns back on itself. It kind of passes by the back side of the capsule. And you have DCT by here. It's kind of where they're all next to each other. And that leads to the um, collecting duct. I'll draw the collecting duct as this straight line. Part of it is in the cortex. Part of it is in the medulla. So it went PCT, the loop, and then the DCT, um, and then a little collecting tubule that leads to the collecting duct, the vertical tube. Well, anyways. That is how the nephron fits within the cortex medulla. <laughs> now this is one kind of nephron. The kind of nephron where it's kind of at the edge, in the outer edge, is called a, a cortical nephron because most of the parts are in the cortex, not the medulla. So I'm going to write that down. This one. Um, let me draw another one, maybe for this one, because there's another kind that is called um, uh, a juxtamedullary nephron. So I'll draw another. Yeah. Okay, so the juxtamedullary, the juxtamedullary, the one that you just mentioned, um, is that the um, structure that secretes renin? No, the structure that secretes renin are the JG cells. And I believe all nephrons have them. Yeah, okay, we'll get to that. Yeah. Professor, yeah. before you go too far, can you show me where the tip is? Yeah. On this uh, slide, the uh, label's there, but you could point to any tip. Uh, okay. Now, look at the collecting duct. The collecting duct has got the finished product here. You, you finish modifying the filtrate at the tip there. So the renal papilla, you should write this down, is the first place you have urine, because you're done modifying the filtrate. Renal papilla. First place, you have urine. Now, if you're to kind of look at that tip head on, if you put your eyeball right there, you'd see you pepper it with all these little holes because it's got all the collecting ducts emptying there. So it's like a shower of urine coming out of there, right? It's going down the water slide <clears throat> down to your bladder. So on my slide, not my slide, my picture here is the tip, the termination of the collecting duct. 
All right, let me draw my juxtamedullary nephron. Now, cortical nephron name because most of it's in the cortex. If it's called juxtamedullary, that means it's next to the medulla. So it's going to be right at the edge of cortex medulla. So I'll draw um, one closer. Here's my glomerulus. Right there. And I'll draw a capsule around it. In my PCT, in my loop. Now this loop extends deep into the medulla. It's going to turn back and go by the back of the capsule, and it's going to empty into collecting duct. Okay, so this is juxtamedullary nephron. Juxta. Medullary nephron. The difference being that the loop of Henle extends deep in the medulla. And um, I'll just put long LOH for short, loop of Henle. What we're going to see is the longer loop of Henle it performs uh, a lot of exchanges with uh, the medulla. It helps concentrate the urine more because. What happens that is the, the medullary pyramids, they have this salt grating that pulls a lot of fluids out of the filtrate to concentrate the urine. So we'll get into that, but I wanted to mention that right off the bat. So two kinds of nephrons in the kidney. It's a microscopic structure. I mean, I drew it in there, but you really need to look at this stuff under the microscope. Uh, okay, so we need to talk about the blood supply. Well, anyways, if you want to look at a model that shows the nephron with the cortex medulla, this model in the room over there uh, is a good one to do it. Okay. But uh, as you can see, the blood supply starts with the renal artery, and it branches and branches and branches. It takes you all the way to the glomerulus. So I want you to know the names of all those branches from renal artery to glomerulus, and even thereafter. I have figures in your book to help you with that. Blood supply. Renal artery, number one. First branch coming off is going to be a segmental artery. There's different ones, but let's just call them all segmental arteries. They go to different segments of kidney. going to branch again and go in between the lobes of the kidney, which are the pyramids. So like uh, branches there, and one goes there, one goes there. So the branches that go in between the pyramids are called interlobar arteries. So maybe this will branch and one goes there, one goes there. So call it number so I'm looking for interlobar between the pyramids. Okay, when the interlobar branches, 
that's going to arc over the top edge of the pyramids. So call that number four, arcuate artery. Now there's a lot of figures of, well, let me just put it this way. Use the arcuate artery as a landmark to help you figure out what's cortex, what's medulla, because they're always at the border of it. So use it as a landmark. A landmark between cortex medulla all right so coming off branching off the uh, arcuate artery are many small branches that they radiate into the cortex So the ones that radiate into the cortex are called cortical radiant arteries. And um, the, old, the older name that I still use is called interlobular artery. Interlobular. Artery. Name I still use. But anyways, it's the one that's radiating into the cortex. Now, coming off interlobular is the afferent arterial, going into the glomerulus here, or going, you know, into the glomerulus here. <clears throat> afferent arterial that goes straight to glomerulus, which I already drew. In terms of blood flow, what comes after the glomerulus? The efferent arterial, it's getting too much to draw on here, but we'll look at more pictures of it. But we made it all the way, branched all the way down to the arterial, to the afferent arterial, to the glomerulus. Uh, here's a closer up picture. So here's my landmark, my arcuate artery. Therefore, what's below? Medulla, the renal pyramid. So cortex is above. This little tree trunk there, which one is that? The arcuate artery. This is the arcuate artery. So what's the branch coming off arcuate? Interlobular. So what do you think the, the branches are here? Coming off interlobular, it would be the afferent arterial. Okay, it'll take some time, but uh, that's what we're looking at there. That's the blood supply. <clears throat> Here's some real pictures. You can see why they name it ball of yarn. They look like balls of yarn. If that G is glomerulus, what's the A going into it? Afferent arterial. Okay. They got the PT. That stands for paratubular capillary. That's what they look like on the microscope. Got some pictures of models here. These are all in the classroom, by the way. Now, what this model set does is they separate the epithelial tube, the nephron, from all the blood. But normally, they're together. And so let's talk about the blood supply. Here's my landmark, arcuate artery and vein. So arcuate artery, there is interlobular, going up there. Coming off the interlobular would be afferent arterial, and the little balls of yarn are the glomerulus, the red balls. Now you put a capsule around that, there's the Bowman's capsule there. Bowman's capsule, so that's the PCT, so what is this big loop called? Loop of Henle. It's turning back on itself. It passes by the capsule. This is the DCT. 
then there's a little collecting, this is DCT, yeah, the collecting tube goes into the collecting duct, the vertical white bed. Okay. So let's go through our three capillary beds. The balls are glomerulus. What do you think this is? Paratubular. Now, vasa recta means straight vessel, and they're in the medulla, so that's all this here. I like this picture because it shows you a renal papilla here. If you were to look at renal papilla head on, this is what it would look like. So make a note to yourself. This little circle with all the holes in it is the tip of a renal papilla. It's another way we can look at it. Okay, a shower of urine right there. So which calyx is this? A minor or a major? I'll call it minor here, and I'll call this major, and I'll call this the renal pelvis. <clears throat> All right, it's a little bit blurry here, but uh, what's the vertical orange thing? Collecting duct. Part of it is in cortex, part is it in medulla. If here's my landmark, which blood vessel is this? Ar arcuate, yeah. Now, if this is my landmark, the arcuate, is this cortex or medulla? <coughs> medulla. Now, do you see the vasa recta? Do you see little threads of yellow, uh, red there? Mm -hmm. They're trying to show you vasa recta. I know it's blurry, but they show you like red to blue there. What capillary bed is that? That's the PT, the paratubular. Okay, it's hard to see. Let me move on. <coughs> Here's what we talked about in terms of flow charts. We started, well, we didn't start with aorta. I guess you could have. The renal arteries branch right off aorta. And it goes to segmental, interlobar, and you'll follow it to glomerulus, which is the efferent arterial. Then it goes to purple to blue. Now, why do you go from red to purple to blue? What are they trying to symbolize? Uh, Gas exchange, yeah. Uh, the delivery of oxygen. Notice how you have glomeruli, which are capillaries, but they stay red from afferent to efferent. Here's a question for you. Does gas exchange occur at the glomerulus? No. There's no gas exchange at the glomerulus. They just perform filtration. Now we're write that down. <coughs> All right. No gas exchange at the glomeruli. Performed at the other capillary beds. So here's um, the nephron again. We talked about it before I just erased it, but it shows you the two kinds of nephrons. The cortical nephron and the juxtamedullary nephron. The difference being long loop, it helps um, concentrate the ear. Okay. Um, so it's simply the ones that are, the ether and arterial branches off first, because you're just closer. Okay, here's my landmark, arterial artery, so that's Medulla up there, cortex. Okay. This is a useful figure. They show you all the capillary beds. They show you this one 
there, that's glomerulus. What do you think the one here is, all the, pur the purple? What would this one be up here, the purple? The PT, paratubular. What's the one that looks like this? These straight vessels with all these little, looks like little hammocks? Vasorecta, all right? So once again, glomerulus, paratubular capillary, vasorecta. Notice the glomerulus stays red. Why is paratubular purple and vasorecta purple? They're showing you gas exchange, okay? From red to purple to blue for the veins. Okay, so that's what I show you here, the three capillary beds. <coughs> now here's some details about the uh, the renal corpuscle, I, have I mentioned the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus. That is also known as renal corpuscle. Let's talk about that. with glomerulus. We're looking at just one here in this figure. And what you see is the Bowman's capsule has, uh, it's bilayered. It's got visceral and parietal layers. simple squamous epithelial tissue. It basically is the capsule part. So parietal layer. capsule function. But the visceral layer is comprised of these special cells called podocytes. Because they have feet. Pod means feet. They comprise the visceral layer of Bowman's capsule. sites with their uh, foot processes. These foot processes, they're wrapping around the glomerular capillaries and they help perform the, the filtration function. Wrap around. Glomerular capillaries. Perform filtration function. If you cut open the renal corpuscle, here's what you got. <clears throat> what I see here is uh, it's a nice picture. Well, first I see the one and the two. The one is which layer? Parietal. The two is the visceral layer. Now, I know these are capillaries. Can you identify the RBC in the glomerular capillaries? See these? Now they're way too big to be filtered out. Okay. So they're going to go in afferent, out efferent. So in this figure, I know this is the afferent, that's the efferent. 
here's the afferent, here's the efferent arterial, and what is not filtered is goes to the efferent arterial. What makes it through the filter is pushed to the PCT. Uh, so the two is pointing to a podocyte cell, okay, wrapping around the glomerular capillaries. And also using this picture, I want you to know what's called the vascular pole and the tubular pole, the one and the two. <coughs> one is vascular pole. That's the side where you, that's the side of the renal corpuscle where you have afferent, efferent, arterial, and you also have a portion of the DCT passing by. This is a cut to uh, DCT. That's your pole. Afferent slash efferent. Arterials with a piece of the DCT. Okay, and again, this is why it's a pole because normally blood flow is arterial capillary vein, and, and the capillary and the arterial and the vein are on opposite sides. But here you have two arterials and they're pushed to the same side. So it's a pole like the North Pole, is on the north. Well, anyways, the other pole, you don't have a blood vessel here. You have part of the nephron. It's called the tubular pole because this is technically the PCT. And the two, tubular pole, basically it's PCT. It's, it's catching all the filtering, so you can filter it. So you have vascular pole, tubular pole, and uh, though that's useful when you study the nephron. You look at a busy picture like this, I mean, it, it kind of helps to know vascular pole and tubular pole because all the convoluted tubes make it confusing. So if I can just, my eye can find that, that's the vascular pole, and then that's the tubular pole, and then I, I can just kind of follow it. So with the family, it goes all the way up passes by there, it goes to collecting up. Okay, now if I can do that, I won't get mixed up in trying to identify things. Okay. <clears throat> Here, here's another one, let's do it again. Okay, which pole is this? Vascular. That's the vascular. So then what's that? Yeah, the tubular, it's the PCT, and if you just follow this big busy thing, uh, yeah, let's go all the way down there. What's this? Loop of Henley. You start to go up the loop. Now you're at the, the DCT. So you always pass by the vascular pole. Then you go into here, collecting tubule into the collecting duct. Okay. So I think that's why it's useful to kind of look at pictures, knowing those poles. And if you do it at models, too, it's also helpful. Here's a closer up view. Here's the vascular pole. That's the afferent arterial branching off the interlobular artery. That's the tubular pole. Therefore, this is PCT. That's the loop. Here's the DCT passing by the vascular pole. Here's the collecting tubule into the collecting duct. Boom, straight down, collecting duct. Okay. Now, if I had you identify this, what would you call it? If the choice is Bowman's capsule or glomerulus, which one's a better answer? Bowman's the Bowman's capsule. The glomerulus is inside there, but I can't see it. That's glomerulus. Okay. <clears throat> what kind of capillaries are these? Red to blue, up here in the cortex. Peritubular. that have the pictures. Let's start with our three capillary beds. Glomerulus, what's this one up here? Paratubular, what's the ones down there? Vasa recta. If you do your vascular pole, tubular pole thing, there's the vascular pole. If that's the afferent arterial, that must be the efferent arterial. Now how do I know that? 
How do I know that's acre? It branches off this, which is what? Interlobular. I better quiz you tomorrow. <laughs> Interlobular, afferent arterial, eprint arterial, boom, glomerulus. So what's that? P, C, T, down the loop, go up the loop, now I'm what? D, C, T, and you go right into the collecting duct there. Okay. Uh, I'll get this one already. This one, we got this one in room two. Let's orient ourselves, because they turn it sideways. So here's my orientation point, seven and eight. Arcuate and artery and vein. Therefore, what's this side? Cortex or medulla? Cortex. Medulla's on this side. So what do you think number one is? The green ball. Not the glomerulus. The bonus capsule. Yeah. So this blood vessel, number nine, interlobular. Therefore, coming off of it, well, this one's labeled number two. Afferent arterial. So number makes number three. Efferent arterial, very good. Now, I like this one here. It goes afferent arterial, efferent arterial, and they show it continuous with 14. Identify that capillary bed. That's paratubular. Yeah. Well, okay, let's see. Now, I see a bunch of tube right there. I see the beige and the purple. Which is there more of? The beige, that's PCT. And that might be another clue. There's more PCT than DCT. All right, so here's my Bowman's capsule. That's my vascular pole. That's my tubular pole. So that's all PCT. It leads down to the loop, goes up the loop. Now I'm into the DCT, pass by the vascular pole. They're always showing that, right? And that's my DCT going into my collecting tube, going to vertical yellow thing, collecting duct. OK, what's the capillary down here? Yeah, basic recta, basically number 13. Now there's a label one there, so you can have fun with that. But let's go back to renal corpuscle and filtration. The filtrate is the filtration of blood, specifically blood plasma. You don't filter critic. Okay. Contains all the plasma components except proteins. Proteins are too big to make it through the filter. Things are secreted into the filtrate. And if they're not reabsorbed, they're excreted. You know, there's a good analogy <clears throat> that's used for this, those four things. Filtration, reabsorption, secretion, excretion. Uh, it's like I have a, this box in my garage. I literally do have a box in my garage full of like things I want to like donate. Some old DVDs I'm never going to watch and some stuffed animals. My kids outgrew. Now the box is a certain size. And I'm only going to donate what fits in the box. So I can't donate my TV, it's too big to fit in there. Uh, things that only fit in the box I'm gonna donate. What function is that? Filtration. Filtration. Small enough to fit in the box. Okay, filtration. All right, so I, I leave it there. And it's like, for a couple weeks, I'm too lazy to go. Okay, there's a thrift store right on my way home, but I'm still too lazy to put the box in my trunk. <clears throat> and so, so it sits there for weeks, and I'm like, oh, I, I wanna get rid of this too. So I put it in the box. I want to get rid of this too. I put it in the box. But my kid comes in, hey, wait, I want that. They take it out. Okay, so when I put it in the box and take it out, put it in the box, take it out, I'm modifying what's in the box. So when I put something in the box, what is that? Secretion or reabsorption? It would be secretion. When I take it out of the box, I want to keep it in my house. It's reabsorption. Yeah. Now, what happens when I finally put it in my truck and take it to the thrift store and Give it to them. That's excretion. And you can't modify it anymore. It's gone. So that's basically what we're doing here. We filter here. Modify, modify, modify. Call it filtrate the whole time. Call it filtrate, call it filtrate, call it filtrate, modify, modify, modify. But finally, when you get to the renal papilla, you're done modifying it. Take it to the donation place. It's urine. You call it excretion. Okay. So basically, urine is you're just done modifying the filtrate. Yeah, question? So when you put when you first put the item in the box, you're secreting, secreting it. it. Then yeah. what's the reabsorption when you take it out? Yeah, because you can secrete it and then reabsorption and take it out and put it in the blood. Oh, I see. Yeah, 
So when you secrete things into the tube, if you don't ever take it out of the box, don't ever take it out of the tube, you're going to excrete it. Okay. <clears throat> All right, the filtration membrane is next. Uh, here's a closer picture of it. We kind of looked at it before. Do you see the glomerular capillaries and do you see the pyrocyte cell? That's what you need to see on this picture. Well, the red tube is glomerulus. Now, all capillaries have fenestrations, well, some more than others. So the fenestrations on the capillaries are very leaky. You want to limit that leak. So what you do is you put the site, and like the site foot processes, they overlap like your fingers interdigitate. And they create the filtration slits. That helps limit the, uh, the filtration by the pores of the glomerular capillary. So let me, that makes it a good filter, basically. said was the foot processes of the potocyte cells interdigitate forming filtration slits. excuse to take a break. We'll come back uh, close to 10 o'clock. <laughs>